90.3 WHPC now presents Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now, learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property and learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau, a past dean of the NASA Academy of Law and frequently lectures to lawyers on ethics and avoiding problems with clients and to the public on how to choose and use lawyers. This is Law You Should Know on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, this is Ken Landau and welcome to Law You Should Know. Today we're going to be talking about trauma to the brain and our special guest is Susanna Stoika and she is a, she is a PhD in designing computers with brain cell like circuits and that has led her to work with people who have suffered injuries of the brain and we'll learn how and why that can happen and how it can be restored and prevented and what some of the limitations might be. Susanna, welcome to Law You Should Know. I can. Looking forward to our chat. Okay. And why is the brain so important? The brain controls every function in our body. Uh, It controls the automatic functions, which happen without our knowledge, as well as we get ahead in life. We learn with it. We uh, function with it. It's very important. So if we lose some movement or we experience pain on some movement uh, and there's nothing physically, let's say, there in that part of the body, it could be because of the information or signals that come from the brain? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can have an old trauma to the brain. And if it's uh, in a region which corresponds to that limb, for example, you can have the pain. And it's a real pain. It's a real, absolutely real pain. And, and how can that pain be documented or demonstrated or proven? From uh, the point of view of medical sciences, it's only uh, by what the patient says. Um, the doctors go after the patient, ask the patient the level of pain, when it happens, you know, what triggers it, and so on. As a healer, you can find that the, the source of the pain very easily by looking into a person's energy field. Is there any objective way to measure that pain? Will it show up in any type of scan or a physical? Or Sometimes it can show up in an MRI. If, uh, for example, a, a person had uh, at one time uh, uh, bleeding or has currently a uh, swelling of the brain. Otherwise, it's, it's very difficult to track it uh, with the medical uh, tools that we have. And is there any, does it correlate to their emotions or feelings or, uh, you know, the, the, the way the brain functions that, that may, it may show up on some kind of test or we can look at a picture of the brain? Usually, uh, MRIs won't show that. Yes, pain can be very easily generated by trauma, emotional or physical trauma. And, uh, for example, fibromyalgia is a typical illness which is uh, generated by long-term trauma. It can be pain, which is a very long uh, time in place. Like I had fibromyalgia and it was so bad I couldn't get out of bed for weeks. Uh, And it got resolved with emotional work. But again, it's only uh, from medical point of view, they can detect it only uh, by talking to the patient. And again, that type of uh, injury may be hard to detect. It's important to go to a doctor who is an expert in that and doesn't poo-poo it. You know, recognize it, diagnose it, and explores different treatments for it. Yeah. Because it may not show up on a different scan. And if the, the doctor it does it's not believe it, it's going to be hard to treat it. Yeah, for example, for my fibromyalgia, a lot, uh, a lot of doctors uh, are of the opinion that it doesn't exist. And a lot of people are suffering from it. And there could be other diseases like that. Some doctors don't believe they exist. Those, you know, those diseases actually exist. And you've got to go to a, a you know competent doctor who believes they exist and offer some treatment. Absolutely, absolutely. What are some other sources of brain injuries? 
brain injury can be caused by uh, physical or emotional trauma. Emotional trauma is, uh, is due to a long, long time of stress. Usually it pops up because sometime in the childhood, the person had a real physical trauma. And that is what's called the delayed brain trauma. It's when uh, a person had a trauma, brain trauma, it was never diagnosed. Uh, the parents uh, thought the kid was okay after he slept it off. And this sensitivity in the brain exists. And when a person is under a long time of stress or sudden uh, stress, uh, major stress, like somebody dies in the family or a shock because of another uh, physical trauma, it pops up and it can be very serious. So that stress may emerge at some point because the person's under stress, you know, emotional stress or physical stress. Is it is also is it genetic in some in some ways or it's on sometimes? Is it inherited or? I didn't find that. Okay. I didn't find that. I found uh, a lot of uh, this uh, pain and. Uh, functional problems because uh, brain trauma can manifest not only as pain or headaches, it can be just uh, a person cannot uh, do anything that uh, is sequencing. For example, uh, doing something that has steps that have to be done one after another. So it's a disabling injury and you've got to work with someone who's going to acknowledge that and try to you know, get you on a path to some sort of recovery. Yeah. Uh, what is strange about brain injuries is that uh, they can appear as, uh, for example, extensive allergies. And when you go to the doctor, uh, they try all the allergy treatments and they can't uh, stop this allergy and it becomes worse and worse. You are more, more and more allergic to many, more and more things. And that it can be di- uh, found out only by a healer who is experienced in uh, brain trauma. And how is, the, how is the, that injury diagnosed? What, what tools are used by the doctor? Maybe it's a, a neuroscientist or some type of brain doctor? Usually it can be diagnosed. It's, uh, the person goes from doctor to doctor to doctor and tries all sorts of uh, solutions and they can't find any, any uh, relief. That's the biggest problem. Okay. Is, I mean, is the, do you go to, who do you go to have it diagnosed? Do you try a neurologist? Do you try a psychologist? Do you try both? Do you go to a physiatrist? It, it depends uh, what are the symptoms because medical science works on symptoms. So if uh, you have the symptoms A, B, C, the doctor knows that typically for ABC corresponds such and such diagnosis. The doctor will try to, to treat that particular problem. If all the known medical uh, protocols do not make any difference, the doctor will typically send on the per- person to another doctor who maybe works in uh, something similar with what the person is complaining about. And if the problem is uh, happens long time after the original trauma, the person doesn't even remember that they ever had the trauma. It doesn't show up on MRI. And they can go from person to person to doctor to doctor without any solution. Is it, is, it, is it possible they had suffered some kind of physical or mental trauma that they've erased from their mind, but it's manifesting itself some way? They typically had a, a physical trauma, a, a known physical trauma. But for example, I had a, a person who came to me, a woman, who was sent by her doctor because he didn't know what to do with her. She was 28 years old, wanted to have kids, but because she had uh, disabling headaches and seizures, every time she had her uh, period, the only medical solution was to stop her period. Of course, you can't have kids if you don't have a period. So the doctor sent her to me. And first time when I checked her out, 
I found uh, that she had a bruising at the back of her uh, brain. And I, it was consistent with uh, uh, auto accident where the b- head was thrown back. So I asked her if she had a, an auto accident before her headaches and seizures started, and she confirmed it. I worked with her probably three times, and I was able to uh, take out that uh, trauma pattern from her uh, energy field, which allowed the brain to heal. And she was able to have three healthy kids afterwards. So people could have experienced some trauma that they're not really aware of. It could have been an auto accident where they felt okay afterward. It could be if they played a sport like football, which is a, could be a very physical game, and they experienced some kind of a lot of trauma that they didn't immediately identify. Absolutely. Uh, for example, another case of mine was a, a very young kid. He had increasingly more headaches. He started with headaches once a month, and then it went to once a week. And by the time he got to me, he had headaches uh, every day and sometimes several times a day. And very very bad headaches. He had to go to a dark room, uh, lie down in quiet, and so on. I worked with him, and uh, I was able to help him uh, stop the headaches uh, fairly easily. And then several uh, years later, he came back. And what happened, the parents thought that he was fine. I told them, please don't let him have uh, contact sports anymore because the uh, brain tissue becomes sensitive. But they sent him back to have uh, baseball. And uh, he got injured again. So So headaches can be a symptom of some type of brain injury. It could be. uh, No, it isn't necessarily a sign of brain injury. It's important to find out what's causing those headaches. And if there's no other cause, it could be a brain injury, and that should be investigated. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'd like to remind our listeners that you're listening to Law You Should Know on 90.3 WHPC Radio, and we're talking about brain injuries, and our guest is Susanna Stoika, and she is uh, she's written some books about it, and she has a PhD in designing computers, and as she mentioned before, they have brain cell-like circuits, and that is similar to how our brains work. And, it, and, and people with brain injuries, whether it's visible or not, they have, there might be some problem with the way their brain circuits are working. You have had uh, – you have a mnemonic, a P-A-W-F-A-T. So what does that mean, and ha- what does it have to do with brain injuries? Uh, I try to give people some uh, neuronics so they can re- remember my advice. Poe fat, like I have a dog, so it was that's why I came back with that. It's an advice on what to do to keep healthy. And the most important thing, very interestingly, is not what you eat or what you do if how much you rest, the most important thing for your health is your mental attitude. And that was explained by a doctor from uh, Stanford Medical School who wrote a, a book, Biology of Belief. Um, and he said that uh, our proteins in our uh, cells are curving when uh, we are under stress. And our DNA is basically a protein uh, ladder, and uh, it's a spiral. So if our proteins are curving where we are under stress, basically our DNA become tighter, which means the replication of the cells can be impacted by it. Now, the other side, if we relax, then again, the cell replication is normal, So we are healthy. The other thing, the second letter, the A, is for the importance of air, of breathing, deep breathing for us. It's known that when people are very uh, excited, the breathing becomes shallow, which means we don't have enough oxygenation, which means our brain doesn't work at its best. So, and that can also cause other problems, too. So deep absolutely. breaths and relaxation, slow breaths is important. Deep breathing, yoga breathing, just going outside in fresh air and having a few deep breaths 
it's very important every once in a while. The third most important thing is the water. We need to drink good quality water. Why? Because the signal transmission in our body from cell to cell is uh, requires water. Also, it's very important for our digestion and elimination. If we don't digest and eliminate properly, we become toxic, which again impacts our thinking. So rather than getting fancy drinks, it's important to just drink high quality water. Yes, or herbal teas. The okay, third so- one is a F, which is for family and friends. Keeping in touch with family and friends, especially now during COVID, is extremely important. Because when we uh, don't talk to them, we are separated. And as human beings, we need that contact. We need in order to, to have a positive outlook on life. The next one is another A, which is being active. We need to have, need sunshine. We need to uh, do at least a fast walking uh, in order again to uh, oxygenate our body to get sunshine, which also fits our system. And the last one is tea, tea from time. Find time to volunteer. People don't realize by volunteering, it's extremely healthy for us because uh, If you help somebody else, you receive back a lot of benefit out of it. Maybe even more. Yeah. And everyone can find something they can do, even if they don't have any special talent or they're not rich. Just talking to someone, asking how they are, running an errand for them, helping them with some chore is helping. Or uh, doing as much now that is COVID, you can't go to many places. But for example, if you just leave a, a dish on somebody's doorstep when they don't, when you know that they don't know how to cook and they don't have healthy food, just leave a dish, or uh, some fruit, or some fruit, or or uh, when you check out as a cashier. Tell how grateful you are that they are working and you can buy your food and the necessities. And so just going back, uh, so the, to be active to the extent you are able, you know, take a few steps more if you can, make sure you get sun. And, uh, and the family and friends, even if your world has been shrinking, reach out to old friends, reconnect with someone, expand your connection with a neighbor or a stranger because it will be good for you and good for them. Absolutely, absolutely. And if the first person you call is not available, doesn't want to hear from you, just go on to someone else. Yeah, and uh, luckily we have FaceTime and Skype and Zoom, and we can keep... Or maybe the old-fashioned telephone works best. You never know. Yeah. And even if it's someone near you in the hallway, in your travels, you know, you can talk to them. How are they doing? Absolutely. People are so hungry to talk. Uh, I find every time I go shopping, everybody wants to talk to me. And they're hungry to see other people face to face, even if it's six feet apart. And let's go back to the positive outlook. The first thing you mentioned in poor fat. Why is that so important? Because of the because of, uh, our whole system works, works best when we have a positive outlook. The um, actually, as a healer, I can see the impact of. Uh, negative emotions. Uh, As a healer, I am working with the energy field, which is something that it's inside the body, it's also uh, around it. And when somebody uh, is uh, cheerful, uh, uh, has a lot of gratitude for what they have in their life, their field is beautifully colored, it's vibrant, it's white. As soon as some, uh, somebody, the same person, tries to think about something negative in their life, the field immediately contracts. And when the field contracts, uh, we are not as protected against illness. In terms of the P, is it also important to focus on the present, to enjoy those things, to do those things today, not worry about any bad things that tomorrow may bring, just to find a positive place in the present today, Mm -hmm. what you can do for yourself, what you can do for others that you're okay, more or less for today. And you don't know what 
good or bad is going to happen tomorrow. And it doesn't really matter what good or bad happened yesterday. You don't have a control over that. <laughs> so you better focus on what you have a con- control over today. And the present doesn't matter. I mean, the past doesn't matter so much. You, you're worried about today, making the most of today in all those ways you mentioned. So with lawyers, how can they, you know, create a better environment for their brain? Can they do something like meditation? Should they talk to their colleagues and their clients and and use the poor fat techniques, in, you know, during the course of their day? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, people are usually very reluctant to start meditating. They feel that it's um, something really woo-woo. It's not. And uh, I would like to suggest a very easy, lazy man's way of starting meditation. You go on, on the web uh, or to Barnes & Noble, listen to a, medita- a guided meditation, which means somebody is talking you uh, through it, a meditation for relaxation. Make sure that you like the voice, because otherwise you won't be able to relax. And you like the meditation. Listen to it for three, four times, just sitting in a chair with your back straight, uh, feet planted on the floor, and make sure that you know what is the content of that tape or CD. Then you take the same CD, once you know that that is what you like, put it on when you go to bed, and start meditating in bed. And you are going to fall asleep faster and faster with that CD. But while you are sleeping, your mind still perceives all that uh, guidance. And you are going to get the benefits of meditation while you are sleeping. And you will have a much healthier sleep too. And some commercials offer a free 30 or 60 second meditation. NPR every day offers a daily meditation. As you mentioned, you can find simple online meditations that just start with a minute or so. As you said, find the voice or the, the scope of it that works for you and just try it. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. I know that you also mentioned that um, what are some other things high intensity lawyers can do to cope with COVID and, and fight stress and uh, besides meditation? These Should they, aside the, from doing also doing the poor fat techniques, I mean, that works for lawyers equally well, and maybe it's even more important for lawyers absolutely. to take a break in their day. Uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind as a lawyer, we are working, uh, lawyers work very intensely and very long hours. Especially now, it's very important to, to understand that if you don't take care of the family, of your family, keep in touch with your family, you are losing one of the best support systems you have for being uh, productive. Also, having philosophy of understanding, uh, which doesn't offer many times your work as as a lawyer, it's very important. I would like to suggest a very easy to read book, um, which was published years ago, I think in 99, by a Canadian. His name is Robin Sharma. And the title of the book is The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. And the bo- it will ring a bell with lawyers because it's a story of a lawyer who has a heart attack at work because of his uh, high octane w- life and decides to go and find out a way to live his life differently. The same person wrote uh, another book called The 5 p.m. Club. And that is a book about how to live your uh, life with more balance, which is basically what lawyers should try to to do. And everyone should try to do it, but especially lawyers. Yeah. Because of the type of life lawyers have, which is very, very intense. And especially with COVID, all the other stresses, it's important for them to reach out to others, to ask them how they're doing, to step away from the heart-driven lawyer all day. And Susanna, have you written a book yourself? I I read only nine books. Okay, so we just tell us briefly some of your books. 
especially on these issues and if you have a website where people can find out further information uh, i will start with the website where you will find all my books it's healingbraininjury.com or uh, i wrote a book about uh, how to be prepared for brain injury how to uh, limit the effects of brain injury and how to improve your cognitive abilities at any age and that book is called hear your brain reclaim your life uh, how to recover and thrive after uh, the head injury also while recovering from my own double head injury i found that cooking is an extremely useful tool because it it uh, triggers your memory it improves your uh, sequencing ability plus it gives you an opportunity to eat healthy food which is very important for the brain the book is uh, serious um, it's called cooking after brain injury easy cooking for recovery for emotional healing uh, i have a book which helps people start their own journey in emotional healing which is called five mirrors five blessings and it's a story of a woman who examines all the aspects of her life and uh, looks at being a daughter being a um, sibling being a wife uh, being a mother and being an employee and she finds all the traumas that she went through all through her life but also the lessons and the blessings in those traumas and many people can relate to those lessons and blessings yes that is why uh, i wrote the book because i found how important emotional health it is for our health and i know that people are many times very reluctant to go to have uh, emotional work done so that will offer them an opportunity uh, to see what is it about to to do emotional work. Okay, and just tell us the website again where people can find out information on the many books you have written. Yeah, uh actually they have quite a, a bit of information about brain injury and how to contact me and so on. The website is healingbraininjury.com. I'd like to thank our guest as you, Susan Susanna Stoika, as you've heard, she's written a lot about the brain injury. She has a lot of good ideas about it. For lawyers who are representing clients with brain injuries or defending cases of brain injury, she's given us a lot of good ideas. For those who might be suffering some type of brain injury or know others who are and just trying to be resilient and survive our world of COVID, she's given us a, a lot of thought and inspiration. So I'd like to thank our guest Susanna Stoika. If you missed any part of today's program or you want to tell someone else about it, the podcast is at nccradio.org along with many other podcasts about law and law related issues and other programs from here on 90.3 WHBC and you're listening to us on 90.3 FM WHBC, the voice of NASA Community College in Garden City, New York. Please join us next week at this same time for another program of Law You Should Know.